So here I am on the West Coast, the stunning beach, the cliffs, the wildlife that's here. Of course, I especially love those beautiful old magical twisted trees. I'm absolutely amazed at how beautiful this place is and how amazing to feel that something that the GIS community has done has saved it. You know, I'm, I'm nearly 90. I do remember when I grew up the first time that I looked at images of planet Earth taken from space this beautiful blue and green globe, surrounded by the dark, cold, black immensity of space, and thinking, this is our only home. And then later on, looking at these satellite images, seeing for the first time the extent of deforestation, the extent of how we are destroying our planet, in the late 1980s, it came to a head when I flew over the tiny Gombe National Park where the chimpanzees live. It was a little island of forest, and around it were bare hills. Forests were disappearing. Clearly, there were more people living there than the land could support, too poor to buy food elsewhere, cutting down the trees to make money from charcoal or timber in their desperation to survive. That's when it hit me. If we don't help these people find ways of making a living without destroying the environment, we can't save chimpanzees, forests, or anything else. I just knew I had to do something. They were drawing maps on the sand with a stick. That was their idea of maps. We talked to the people. What do you think we can do to make your lives better? So it began with what the people wanted, which was to grow more food. We introduced GIS satellite imagery mapping into the research. I remember when we first went to one of these villages, this woman pointed at the map with such excitement and she said, that's the tree. I put my baby under the tree when I'm working in the field. When the people looked at these satellite images, of course they were amazed. I'd never seen anything like it before, but they could understand them. At the same time, we had forest monitors, volunteers on the ground from the different villages, and they could monitor the health of their forest. And they'll go in and they'll take a photograph of an illegally cut tree or of an animal trap that shouldn't be there. So this all uploaded in the cloud, and then that is available to the heads of the villagers. They can see what's happening on the maps. They could do their land use management plan. This was beneficial to conservation, as well as finding the best places for them to grow their food. This gives me hope that if we get together now, it's not too late. Roots and Shoots is a program that I began in 1991 with 12 high school students in Tanzania. With its main message, every single one of us makes an impact on the planet every day. That program is now in 68 countries and growing. I can't begin to tell you how exciting it is for me when I'm traveling around to see that these young people truly are discussing the problems they care about. And then it's about action. Roll up your sleeves and get out there and walk the talk. And that's happening all over the world. And so it's kind of spreading in a magical way. You cannot not be hopeful about that. GIS is changing the whole nature of conservation, whether in the city or in the countryside, learning about what's going on on the ground from above and tying that in with what we know on the ground below is changing the course of history.